In this presentation, uh, we are, it's my white pad, in this presentation we are going to look at uh, trees. This is a new topic and the, essentially what we're going to look at is a, it's a, a, a lot of concepts and definitions that essentially follow on from introduction to graph theory which we a previous section that I would have looked at. Now as the syllabus stands so far at time of recording I'm going to follow on from the topics uh, that were on this course in its original incarnation uh, when I uh, done this previously. So they are properties of trees which is going to be the key thing I'm going to look at right now uh, root of trees and binary trees and binary search trees. So the properties of trees are sort of looking at things in a very mathematical sense. Whereas root of trees, binary trees, binary search trees would sort of uh, be related to how these um, theories will be applied in the computer science setting. But anyway, uh, the key thing right now is properties of trees. Okay. So again, let's be mindful of the fact a lot of things come from graph theory. So I'm going to be re uh, looking at a lot of definitions and terms and so on that follow from graph theory. So if you don't know what, gra the, what these terms are, probably just go back to the graph theory stuff first. So, uh, characteristics of a tree. A tree is a connected graph that contains no cycles. A tree has no loops and no multiple edges. All trees are simple graphs. Okay, what I'm going to do actually is just actually it's sort of flesh that point out. So it's a connected graph that contains no cycles. So what I'm going to do first off is here's a vertex, here's a vertex, here's a vertex, here's a vertex, here's a vertex. Okay. And here is a an edge. Okay. Now, it's a connected uh, graph, okay, so what we have there is a tree, but uh, if we add this edge, uh, this uh, vertex in with no edges, this is now not a tree, we can uh, bring that back and put in a an edge there. So now this is again a tree, okay, so it's a connected uh, uh, graph that contains no cycles okay so suppose I was to th what we have here right now is a tree suppose I was to put an edge in here okay uh, where those dots are that would disqualify it as a tree because there's to be no uh, cycles okay so um, I just took everything out there so I'll just start with a new tree here for a, s a second so there we have a tree there again okay now um, all trees are simple graphs. Okay, so uh, there is no multiple edges between um, vertices. So, for example, if I was to put another edge here, that would also disqualify it as a tree. So that's a, another no-no. Okay, so uh, all trees are simple. Okay, now a path, this is an interesting one. This is quite useful for uh, starting out, uh, particularly with a lot of the questions I'm going to be working with. A path, a, a path graph, a tree that contains only vertices of degree 1 or 2 is called a path graph. Uh, the length of a path graph is the number of edges in it. Okay, so what we actually have here is a path graph. The reason is that, let's go through the vertices here. This is vertex of degree 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, and 1. So essentially what it is, it's like a one-way trip around all of the uh, edges, all the vertices, okay? And the length is the number of edges there, so we actually should see five edges. So I'll call this edge 1, edge 2, edge 3, edge 4, edge 5. Okay. So, that's grand. Now, the this is an important one. Uh, there's a couple of there's a couple of things related to this that uh, we're going to flesh out properly because it, the, this is how you'd answer a lot of the questions that will come up with regards to this question. Let T be a tree with n vertices. Necessarily, there are going to be n minus one edges. Okay. We don't actually have to prove that, but we'll just take we take it as a statement of fact. Okay that there are always necessarily going to be n minus 1 edges okay so let's just sort of see how many edges do we have uh, vertices do we have here I'm going to call it a that's a uh, vertex a this is vertex B this is vertex C D E and F okay so that's six vertices and we have five edges uh, one two three four five 
Okay. Now, um, you could try a sort of proof by contradiction or something like that just to sort of see if you can come up with an edge or a, a tree, but it won't work essentially. Okay. Now, uh, this is good. We're going to take this as a statement of fact that let T be a tree of n vertices and then T has n minus 1 edges. Necessarily, the sum of the degree sequence is also going to be 2n minus 2. Okay, that's important. It's a sort of consequence that the number of edges is uh, one half of the sum of the degree sequence. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is come up with a little thought exercise. Suppose we have six vertices. Okay, and Uh, what we might be interested in, all possible, I'll write this in blue, all possible degree sequences, okay, this is a sort of great place to sort of start with this, this sort of th uh, thing, okay, so the first thing is uh, there's going to be five edges, okay? Okay, so the sum of degree sequence is going to be 10. Okay, now there is a consequence of the definition that I'm going to introduce shortly, but uh, I, I'll just actually state it now, is that uh, there must always be two vertices of degree one, okay? Now, I've sort of just dropped that in there out of the blue. I'll come back to that shortly, but it's just a sort of handy one to know. And what we're going to do now is try and come up with all degree sequences possible. Okay. So first off, uh, let's up uh, scenario one, Roman numerals. Well, let's write out our degree sequence. There's going to be six vertices. Okay. And two of the vertices. So this is uh, uh, vertex one, vertex two, vertex three, vertex four, vertex five, vertex six. What we have to do there is put in the degrees for each. Okay. Now, one type of uh, uh, path we could have, uh, possible degree sequence is a degree sequence of a path graph. So what we would have there is there are either ones or twos. Okay. Two, 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 two. Okay. Now, let's just consider this for a second. So I just dropped it in there, but let's sort of backtrack a bit. bit. Uh, let's just say the highest possible uh, value the degree sequence was two, okay. Path graph. So they have to. We have to reduce them now, okay. So we can't go any higher than two for the next one. So the two, 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 two. The sum of the degree sequence there is ten, okay. Let's just see what would happen if we had uh, the highest vertex was three. Now necessarily it must be two. Uh, vertices of degree one, okay. But this part here, the sum of the degree sequence must be five, okay. So what we could have here is three, one, and one. That would make sense, okay. And in fact, it makes sense, and I'm going to leave it there. And what we could actually also have is three, uh, three, um. Oh, I'm going to sort of break things down here now. So, could we have 3, 3, 2, 1, and 1? No, we can't, because we can't have degree sequence with 0. That just makes no sense. Okay. So, that's just totally wrong there, this this uh, possible scenario. The next one, we, so essentially there has to be a sum of 5 there. Okay. So, 2, 2, and 1. Okay, that actually would work. Okay. 
and could we have a degree sequence where there is a vertex of degree 4 so 4 a 1 and a 1 over here okay now so we can have a, a vertex of degree 2 here a 1 and a 1 okay that actually works as well so one more we have a vertex of degree 5 let's put that in red and all of the other vertices are 1 okay so essentially what happens here if you were to go through all of these they accord to the rule of degree sequences that the uh, highest degree goes first and, and ever decreasing after that or not, in, not increasing the, the so, there's all six vertices the sum is always 10 okay and there are, there's always two vertices of degree 1 okay so we have five possible ways we can get a tree on five vertices or six vertices and so on the first one is a path graph the last one here would correspond to this little star graph okay that's a possible tree there as well okay now it's important to know this because if you're asked to draw uh, non-isomorphic trees, uh, which we might do later on, you actually should be able to sort of figure out what the possible degree sequences are and then draw them from that. This is the best way to do it in my opinion. Know what the degree sequences should be and see what possible trees correspond to each. Okay. Now, uh, so that is the first thing we're going to do. That's the number of edges. Let's see. Okay, so uh, there's a sort of consequence to this that I haven't introduced that there must be two vertices of degree one in a tree. Okay. Now, spanning subgraphs. The graph H is a spanning subgraph of a graph G. If H's vertices or H, we say H in our H's vertices are a subset of the G's vertices. Uh, set its edges are a subset of the edge set of G and each edge of H has the same n vertices in H and G so H is a spanning subgraph of G if the vertices of H are the same as G's okay and it's uh, further on from that uh, if H is a spanning subgraph which is also a tree it's said to be a spanning tree G does not actually have to be a spanning tree lot to take in there so let's just actually sort of draw one out and let's get stuck into this actually so suppose I have a graph here I'm going to do the whole thing in red this is graph G okay and it doesn't have to be a tree okay uh, just a sort of edge off there okay so what I'm going to do here is draw a spanning subgraph okay so uh, this G is what we have here H is what I'm going to so superimpose on top of it so H I'm just going to try to draw it down the side so you can see both okay this so far is a spanning subtree subgraph okay because it's just using a subset of a, a subcomponent of G okay now let's just say for argument's sake I was to add this green line this green edge to H H now is no longer a spanning uh, subgraph of G because this edge here does not is not part of G so we have broken the rule of a spanning subgraph let's just go back there again if H is a subgraph of uh, G, H's vertices are equal, are a subset of G. So actually, I have to go back there. Have I got to all the, um, the vertices? So all the vertices are connected. Okay. All of uh, G's vertices are connected by H. That's important. Okay. Um, but they don't have to be. They are a subset of G's, okay, but 
this is just a sort of counter example actually just to be clear what I mean if I was to connect this vertex here to H this vertex is not part of G's um, uh, edge set, vertex set so that would disqualify that uh, that would disqualify H as a spanning subgraph okay its edges are a subset of the edge set of G okay all of the blue edges there have equivalent red edges the green one is is doesn't but it's not part of the subgraph we're just if we were to put that in it would it, that is not a part of the uh, G ed, uh, edge set and each edge of H has the same end vertices in G and H uh, something that might also have said so that this would be all another uh, uh, sort of way of looking at that one the the uh, vertices essentially yeah, I think that sort of actually covers it really H is a spanning subgraph of G if the vertices of H are the same as the vertices of G so the in the first case we had a spanning subgraph or a subgraph now this is a spanning subgraph because let's just uh, look at this here this is the rule I want to get that H is called a spanning subgraph of G if the vertices of H are the same as the vertices of G so essentially all of the uh, vertices for G are connected by this graph H because it has all the same set of vertices okay H is a spanning subgraph if H is a spanning subgraph, which is also a tree, then it is said to be a spanning tree. G does not have to be a tree. Okay, that is also a spanning tree because it has no loops, no cycles, um, and so on. It's a proper tree there, the H. Uh, okay, let's move on from that. This is a question here. I'll, go, I'll sort of stop here and start on this next question uh, in the next one here. So just draw this... Uh, graph and draw a spanning tree of G and this is the third part there draw all the non isomorphic spanning trees of G and call this set S this is actually trickier than it looks how many non isomorphic trees can be created by adding a vertex and edge to the trees in S that's actually quite a lot of work there so the next exercise I'll actually look at the first two and we will move on from that so this is a uh, just a quick get get started on trees